Well, winter is here in Spokane, and I know there's many of you that are stressing out about living in an area with snow where maybe you haven't lived in snow for 10, 20, 30 years. So this video is for you to show you what it's like living in a place that gets some snow, how to prepare, and what you should expect here in Spokane, Washington. So let's get into this video. So the first snow here in Spokane already happened last week in late October. Felt a little bit early, but that is not super uncommon for Spokane, Washington. I would say uh, very often we get at least one snow in October, maybe every other year or so. Back in 2020, we had the first snow of the year on October 23rd, actually a few days earlier than the day that we had it this year. And it was the snowiest day in October that they had it uh, on record. There was six inches of snow in one day. So that's more unusual. What more often happens is what happened this year where we have snow on one day, it's maybe an inch or two, and by the afternoon or the next day, it's melted away. And so this year we've had some cold weather stick with us. We are already in the low to mid twenties overnight. Uh, and so furnaces are cranking away and we're having to change our outfits very quite rapidly from t-shirts last week to bundled up in sweatshirts during the day this week. Now, because of that snow, we had a couple headlines come out recently that said Spokane is the snowiest city in the United States. And I just wanted to debunk that. That article was specifically stating that Spokane was the snowiest city in the United States on that very day, um, but not at, not in the across the country on any scale or like a regular basis. We're not making the top 10 on a regular basis. There's many places in the Northeast that regularly get over 70 inches a year of snow. Spokane gets on average about 56 to 58 inches of snow. So I wanna give you 10 tactical things that you can prepare for or practice in order to be more prepared for winter here in Spokane. And if you're making the move to Spokane, a lot of people will hold off until after the winter, but they think that that would be kind of in their mind post Christmas, but we got snow all the way into April this year. And so just factor that into your move that you're potentially looking at moving in May to avoid any type of snow. And so what I tell people is that if you're moving, especially from across the country, one, it's likely that you're using a moving company. I highly recommend you use pods because they are a lot more flexible and I just have had way better experience with them than using a national semi-truck mover. Somehow they just tend to lose your stuff for 10 days at a time. I have no idea where the, the trucks go. They go to the third dimension or something and then magically come back, um, but use pods. There's a storage facility here in Spokane. They can sit here for as long as you need. And so even if you wanna go on vacation to the Bahamas for three months to stay warm and come here in May, all your stuff will be at the pause facility and then you can un they'll drop it off in your driveway. It can stay there for as long as you need. You can move in as slow as you need. But the other thing is that even if it's winter that you're moving into your house, that pod can get dropped off in your driveway and then you could hire a local moving company to move your stuff into your house for you so you're not actually moving in the winter. Like you can just be inside your warm house and just be directing traffic on where you want your furniture to go. So I just always try to remind people that there's worse things in life than moving in the winter, specifically if you are going to just respect your own time, your own energy levels, just hire some college kids or some movers to do the work for you so you can just stay inside your house and not having to go back and forth through the snow. But let's get into this list of 10 things to do. Number one is practice your driving. If you are somebody that is not used to driving in the snow, when it is snowing, get your car out into an empty parking lot and figure out what it's like to actually drift. Like make sure you got some space around you, but go out there and turn your wheel pretty hard, spin your car around, get figure out what that feels like and figure out how to balance it back and fight against the drag that the ice creates and stuff. So this is just a really good thing to know is like how did your car react when it hits some ice and are you able to counteract that turn, turn in the opposite direction on a, a moment's notice or are you gonna immediately feel like you turn into it? You gotta be able to figure out which way is my car moving, which way is it whipping so I can turn in the opposite direction and try and straighten it out. The other pro tip with this is that when you're driving in the snow, slamming on your brakes is the worst thing you can do. So this is why you need to leave space in front of you. That's tip number two. Always leave 
way more space than you think because when you're braking and it's super icy, you need to just pump your brakes. Do not slam on them. You're just gonna keep sliding and not actually do anything. So those two tips, it really just saying, don't be afraid to drive, but go spend some time and drive and practice in the snow and on the ice uh, in a safe environment so that you actually know what that feels like. Third tip is get some driving gloves and get some like intense ones. They need to have either some grip on them, some leather gloves, and you should keep these in your house. You should bring them in, uh, in and out of your house with you. Keep them by the back door, wherever, or in the garage somewhere because they need to be warm. If you're leaving them in your car, and especially if you don't have a garage or parking on the street, they are gonna be just as cold as your car is. So bring them inside, have them be warm, put them on. But then that way, like if you're not wearing gloves, those steering wheels are freaking cold and it's just as much, just as painful as grabbing a cold steering wheel as a really hot one. And you're just gonna wanna like barely hold on to it. And that's obviously a bad thing to do when conditions are rough. So get really good grippy gloves so that you have good control of your car when you're out there. And along with that, you're gonna have to get used to scraping your car, which I know is a foreign concept to some people out there, but we have little ice scrapers that you buy at the gas station. Usually they break like once a year because they're kind of cheap, like unless you get a fancy one, but you're gonna be scraping. And so you really wanna make sure you have good gloves that are just gonna protect your hands to get some of that ice off if you do not have a garage to park in. And I have a little bonus tip I'll give you at the end, but that goes along with that. So make sure you stay till the end of the video to get that. But the fourth thing that we're gonna go over is don't just stay inside. So many people here in Spokane, unless they are outdoorsy, just get trapped inside their homes. They don't really do anything. Um, those that like winter sports go skiing and snowboarding uh, because there's a lot of opportunity for that in the area. But if you're not that person, it's easy to just huddle up inside and not do anything. But during the holidays specifically, there's a lot to go check out. Tons of Christmas uh, light displays like Christmas tree elegance down at the Davenport. You can go on a holiday lights tour, which I have a video, should be linked somewhere up here that you can go watch because those places kind of do it every single year. And just keep an eye out for different ways to get out and celebrate. Downtown does a pretty good job of creating opportunities to get out of your house and go do something in the winter. All the restaurants are open, the small businesses need your support, so keep going out there. Don't just get stuck inside your house. Next up is a home maintenance item, it is to make sure to drip your faucets. This is especially true for some of the older homeowners. My home personally is over 100 years old. It was built in 1907. There, certain things aren't to code and these homes tend to get really cold in the basements. They have rock foundations. And one thing I know for my house is that like the kitchen faucet, the, the pipe, and I mean in a lot of homes, the pipe is on the outside of the house. It's not on an interior wall, it's on an exterior wall. And so it's gonna be more susceptible to getting cold. And so what you wanna do is make sure that especially overnight, but even throughout the day, you're dripping your faucet, let the water just keep going and have motion through the line so that it's not just sitting stale and more likely to freeze up, even turning on your hot water lines so that things are providing some heat in there. But then also open up the cabinets underneath your sink so that the hot air from your furnace is going under there and keeping your pipes warm as well. Uh, so the biggest thing that, I mean, one of the biggest ways to damage your home is through a frozen pipe. And so dripping those faucets can be very important. And then uh, if you haven't already, or you have or thinking about for next year, make sure that sprinkler lines are getting blown out with air pressure thing. You can just hire a sprinkler company, company, landscape company to come out and do it for 50 bucks or so. It's just really easy. And then you need to have a spigot cover these little foam covers that go over your spigots to keep that warm as well, just as an extra layer of protection. All right, so I've lost count of my tips, but this next one is for my nine to five workers or my, my seven to four workers even in, in late winter. If you are one of those people that goes in uh, for regular office time, then it is likely that you are gonna go dark to dark, meaning you're gonna get to work when it's dark and you're gonna go home when it's dark. And so that can be really tough for some people. And so you need to make sure that you're spending your lunch break outside, or at least hopefully you're finding a window or something where you can just take in some sunshine. Even if it's cold outside, I would recommend going for a walk though, because if you're in an office building, especially in the middle of it or something where you don't get a lot of natural light, you are very likely to go dark to dark. And uh, for 
minimum of like a month and a half to two months before that starts to stretch out a little bit more. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And along with that, my next tip is to take vitamin D and daily supplements. Uh, because we go dark to dark, it is very common for people to get seasonal depression um, due to lack of light. And so you need to supplement your vitamins, boost your energy levels with different supplements. This is especially prevalent for women, but I mean, I've had my blood work done last year. I was super low in vitamin D. So this is definitely something you can do to just help boost your energy levels throughout the winter, uh, especially if you're just not seeing a lot of the daylight. Next up is to prepare your drives. So there are certain streets in Spokane that are prone to getting shut down in the winter uh, if there is kind of a flash snowstorm or a flash freeze. So these are specifically up, uh, going up the South Hill. So like Stevens, Washington, Washington, Freya, and even Monroe sometimes. These are just steeper hills that uh, you can get a decent the way up, but you it's long enough that eventually you're gonna lose traction and kind of just start skidding back down. And so as somebody that was born and raised on the South Hill, there was definitely times when I was in high school and have to finding an alternate route back home. Usually the most successful way is to go all the way down to uh, Cedar, where the bottom, before, like at the bottom of High Drive, and uh, that's much more of a shallow slope going up the hill. And then you can kind of like weave your way back and forth between the neighborhoods, depending on how high up you are. So Cedar's kind of like the back road, and then there's a couple other side streets you can take on the east side of the South Hill to get up there. The other neighborhood that this can cause problems for is Five Mile. There's quite a few steep hills getting up to the top of Five Mile. And then even based off my last video in Woodridge, we saw that there's some pretty steep hills going into Woodridge Estates, those Lennar Woodridge community. And so those are just gonna be places where uh, it's possible that you're gonna get icy pretty quickly and are just in those instances where snow hits really hard. So you just gotta be prepared for that. A lot of people ask me what car I drive or if it is necessary to have a four wheel drive here in Spokane. Personally, I drive a front wheel drive Prius that uh, I didn't even put snow tires on last year, which we'll get to snow tires in just a second. Um, I had all seasons on it and did just fine, but I've been doing this my entire life and I lived in Montana for a little while where the snow was even worse. So just be thinking about yourself in this situation, but uh, do a lot of people have all wheel drive or four wheel drive cars for sure? Is it 100% necessary? No, especially if you do have snow tires, which I've learned is a foreign concept to some of you out there that have never lived in the snow. So snow tires are a whole other set of tires that you will have. You're gonna stack them away in your garage for, three, uh, for nine months of the year, pull them back out, put them on your car, and then drive with studded tires. They have little metal studs on them that give you additional traction when you're out on the road. And so there are specific dates that the city of Spokane deems every single year, depending on what the weather patterns are, on when it is legal to have your snow tires on. And so depending on what those dates are, you're going to schedule the time with Les Schwab or Tyrama, whoever you bought your tires from, and they will put your snow tires on for free. So these lines can get very long because nearly everybody in the city of Spokane has to do this, but I know the concept of having a whole other set of tires, and I don't mean just tires, but like the rims as well, because they're just gonna pop the whole thing off and then put the new one back on. They're not pulling the rubber off and putting it on the same uh, rim that's gonna be, way, that's they're actually gonna charge you for that, and it's gonna be way worse for the tire itself. So just make sure that you're having two sets of tires, two sets of rims, and you're alternating those depending on the snow conditions, um, because that's gonna be the best for you in, in your safety and your driving. But in the event that you do get stuck, my last little thing here before the bonus is to just have some emergency supplies. Specifically, if you have a larger vehicle that's pretty long, it's more likely that you're gonna have a tail whip situation. And so you should weigh down the back of your car, especially if you have a truck. Uh, most trucks, they need a lot of weight in the back to help weigh them down so that they're not sliding around so much on the ice. So put in, uh, they, they sell these huge long uh, sandbags that you can put in there as weight. But then the nice thing about that is if you ever do get stuck, you have something that you can throw down on the snow to get some traction instead of just spinning your tires and getting more stuck in the, in the spot that you are. So having sandbags, emergency lights, 
blankets, food, things like that, especially if you're going to be driving somewhere like Seattle or going over Snoqualmie Pass, it is not uncommon to be stuck in a pass for eight hours at a time. So just have some, some emergency supplies, especially on those longer trips, because you may not be in an accident, but somebody else was in an accident and you are stuck in the past because of that. So just the, something to think about. And then my last little bonus here, something to think about when you're buying your car, especially if you have a garage, is to just get auto start, which I don't even think I'm saying the right name for that, but where you can be in your kitchen and you can push the button and your car turns on and can get warmed up the snow is going to start melting off, things like that. Well, unfortunately, my camera died and we just need to get this video done. So make sure that it is an auto start, that you can keep your doors locked if your car is parked out on the street, just so that nothing bad happens to it. Or if you're going to auto start your car or turn it on to warm up in your garage, obviously open your garage door so that air is circulating and nothing bad happens. Uh, so that's, that's my quick tip. It's not usually expensive if you have an older car to install it, maybe a few hundred bucks, but it is a total lifesaver to just let your car warm up for a few minutes, uh, 10 minutes even, let the defrost do, do its work, get some of that ice melted off so that you're just not scraping forever and ever trying to get some of that ice off. So that was my pro tip. Anyway, I hope this video makes you feel at least a little bit more comfortable or feel like you can tackle winter here in Spokane. I'm interested to see how heavy it will be. If you've never driven in winter, let me know down below. I'd love to help you out or just be interested to know if you have snow in your area, anything like that. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We're, we're releasing videos every single week on Spokane to help you make the move even easier. And if you are moving to the area or you have any more specific questions, use the link down below in the description to schedule a meeting on my calendar at a time that's convenient for you. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.